Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the all new tooled 172nd scale Mark 5C Spitfire from Airfix. Let's have a look. Okay, first sprue, we have our complete lower wing and our separate left and right upper wings with the tips molded in place. Ailerons and flaps are molded with the upper wing, so gonna give us a nice sharp trailing edge. Might end up with a bit of a gap here, but uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, when we assemble it. Panel lines look nice and sharp more or less. Upper wings look nice and sharp, not too deep. The lower wing, eh, they seem a little, little bit more soft, a little wider. Not, not, as, not as nice as these ones, but uh, not as important as, you know, you don't see it as much on the bottom. Nice fabric texture on the, uh, the tail planes. Nice defined hinge line. I always like to see deeper lines on the control surfaces. You, ailerons, panel lines are the same. I would like to see that a little bit deeper, but we can always attack that with a scribing tool. Cannons are molded into the wing, which is something I, I don't like because you're just asking to break those off, but they seem quite stoutly molded in, so those should be pretty secure. And of course they're nicely molded so they don't get broken in packaging. And we've got all of our ejection ports open. Which is nice to see, not just a little shallow depression actually molded through. The, uh, they've thoughtfully molded a hollow behind the uh, cannon bulges so you don't have a big nasty sink mark on the top. Nice big socket for the landing gear legs, a little bit of wheel well detail. This is of course being the Mark V C, which had the universal wing, uh, which could mount any combination of four 20 millimeter cannons and or four 303 machine guns. Although you more commonly saw twin cannons and four machine guns, but uh, a few fighters, mostly in the Mediterranean, did have the 420s but uh, really wasn't until the post-war uh, 21, 22, 24 variants where you really saw a standardization of 420s. But uh, yeah, that looks pretty good so far. And we've got our fuselage halves and we do get duplicate upper wings. So you've got the option with complete full span wings or you got the clipped wing tips and this sprue is quite the opposite in this one the wings are much sharper more defined panel lines than the wing on this one fuselage are definitely a little bit sharper than the wing so Curious, maybe two different guys were working on it, but uh, should look fine nonetheless. Might be a little bit shallow here, but overall not too bad. Uh, we do start to lose the panel lines as we go through 90 degrees at the wing root, um, but that wouldn't be a huge pain to just deepen those up a little bit. All the various little bulges on the upper cowling. Got the little fasteners around the engine cowling. Those maybe want to just enhance those with a fine drill bit just a little bit so those don't disappear. And especially as those should go, I believe, all the way up and around. Once again, 
upper wing halves just the same, just minus the wing tips. A little bit of cockpit detail molded in, but uh, looks like we've got a big insert for the majority of it. Cockpit door is molded in place. Yeah, that looks all right. We've got our propellers. We got the, I believe it was the de Havilland and the Roadhaul propellers. Landing gear legs, very, very petite. Definitely look in scale. Doesn't seem to be a big nasty seam line down the side, so that's nice. Tail wheel looks really good. Got our pieces for boxing in our wheel wells molded separately. Got our fake landing gear for the in-flight option and uh, got our full wheels here for gear down. Uh, five spoke wheels. Hub detail is a, a little soft. Yeah, those are usable, but I would be tempted to replace those. I mean, there's no shortage of uh, Spitfire wheels out there that you can choose from. Pilot seat and armor plate. That's probably a little over thick, but you're not really going to notice that too much. Instrument panel, which is very nicely molded. That's... That's probably better than I've seen in some 48 scale kits. Yeah, you could, uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of detail painting, a little bit of dry brushing, make that, make that pop out nice. All the other various frames for the cockpit. And of course the, uh, the inserts for the uh, lower half of the cockpit tub for lack of a better term. Spitfire didn't really have a tub or a floor, it was just kind of everything just kind of hovering in the middle of the fuselage. Throttle and various other little bits molded into the sides. Nice big slots for the uh, frames to mount into. Some big nasty ejector pins. So might want to fill those, but chances are we're probably not gonna see any of that, especially if we have the uh, canopy closed. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we, wheels are a little disappointing, but uh, we can manage with those. And we've got our exhaust pipes, the fishtail, both are fishtail type exhausts. One pair has the little extra pipe going to the inside, the others do not. I, I believe that was for cockpit heating or maybe Heating ducts directed out to the guns. Um, don't quote me on that. I'd have to look that one up. Big slipper tank. You've got the conventional and the tropical lower engine cowling. Radiator. Got our extra 20 millimeter cannons. So we can do the uh, the four cannon wing if we cho choose, or we have the blanking pieces if we're doing the two cannon aircraft. We've got our larger and smaller prop spinner for the De Havilland or the Rodol propeller. With a separate back plate. We've got two two different oil coolers. The lower portion of the uh, cockpit with the rudder pedals, control column, undercarriage lever, oxygen bottles. We got our pilot. He's a little, he's a little soft and not well defined. Yeah, passable, but uh, eh, I'll probably leave him out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that's the that's the bigger slipper tank. Um, I think that was the 90 gallon. 
There was a smaller 30 or 45 gallon slipper tank that you saw quite a bit of that uh, is rather elusive. Uh, not many kit, no kits really have it, and no aftermarket producers have done it. So CMK or Edward, if you're listening, uh, wouldn't mind seeing some of the, the smaller slipper tanks. But uh, yeah, it looks good. And they're clear parts. Nice and shiny. Quite thick, not too bad, but still relatively thick. And there's, oh yeah, there's gonna be a lot of distortion in those. So if you are a person that spends a lot of time in the cockpit, you're probably gonna wanna leave it open. Um, if you're doing the clock the cockpit closed, I wouldn't spend a lot of time detail painting as you're not really going to see definitive detail, you're just going to see color more or less, so just keep that in mind. But they're nice and clear, nice and shiny. Framing is well defined, so those won't be too hard to mask. Don't see any spidering or anything, just yeah, just because of the thickness and the uh, the shape of the bubble there, you're not going to see much through it. Yeah, this one here is just about broken off the sprue. And of course, that sprue attachment's right onto the clear, so that's, that's kind of taking a... Now let's just break it off. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, that's taking a little bit of a chunk out of there, so... If this happens to yours, I'd probably put, if you have the option, put this side to the rear of the fuselage and then get a little super glue in there, sand it, fill it, polish it, and you can blend that in. But uh, yeah, that really should be, those sprues really should be attached at the bottom or on the back edge and not on the face. So no, no huge loss because you, you could always just saw this piece off if you need it. And our reflector site, which always has to be a compromise, and this one has a bit of a mold line down the middle. At this scale, I usually just paint those silver. I don't usually leave them clear, but quick swipe with a sanding stick, take care of that. Uh, yeah, not too bad. And we've got our decals. As usual, Airfix, they shop this out to Cartograph, so these should have absolutely no issues. Got our instrument panel decal here in the usual kind of high contrast airfix fashion, which, I mean, like I said, you're not going to see detail through those cockpit canopies, but uh, you'll see color, so at least you know there's an instrument panel there. All the, all the stencils are actually legible, which is quite nice. Wing walks, which are always a pain. U.S. Army Air Force and South African Air Force options. Of course, being part of the Commonwealth, they uh, use the standard British markings but replace the red with orange, which is something nice and different. Very minimal clear carrier on these. Nothing right to the edge, nothing overhanging, even on the, uh, the letters where we have a bit more, it's right to the edge, only only what they need and nothing more. So you shouldn't have any real issues with uh, silvering there. Not too thick looking either. Those look those look really nice. Yeah, those should behave themselves. And our instructions. Usual historical blurb. Safety briefing. And the important stuff. So we got our rear frame, the seat mount, oxygen bottles attached to one half, frame, rearmost frame of the cockpit, the instrument panel with your decal, lower part of the few of the cockpit with the control column, seat with the armor plate which goes in here. I believe that was the undercarriage lever. No, flap, lap, flap control lever. It goes on the 
other side of the cockpit. And then these then go together. Sight goes on to the top of the instrument panel. Nice to see a nice big attachment point there. So oftentimes you've got this little tiniest dot that you can glue that to. Nice to see a big mounting attachment there. Bulkhead at the front, keep everything squared up. Uh, if you're doing canopy closed, you're going to have some surgery here to remove the uh, the rails that the canopy would slide on. Another little bottle. Completed cockpit goes into one half. I would imagine it would be possible to mount each tub half to each fuselage half and then mount everything in. Might... Um, Assuming everything fits perfectly, because it's possible if the width of this is tighter than the width of the fuselage halves, you could end up with some fit, but I uh, have to see what happens there. Fuselage halves go together. Got our big nubbin here for the propeller, which don't glue. Same as uh, the other half, a little bit of surgery here if we're doing the closed canopy. You got the pieces to box in our wheel wells. And if we're mounting that slipper tank, we got some holes to open up. And upper, upper wings mount to the lower wings. Fuselage to the wings. Tailplanes, rudder. Both options are using the tropical filter because they don't give us an option for the uh, the standard lower cowling. Uh, a and B, so depending on which marking option, you're going to have the twin cannons or the quadruple cannons. So make sure you, you pick your paint scheme ahead of time. We got our rudder, which we can pose the uh, flap opener closed. Got our oil cooler. Uh, we got our fake wheels for in flight or our full landing gear. Tail wheel, slipper tank if we are going with that option. Our exhaust pipes without the little extra feeder pipe coming off of them. Or, nope, sorry. Yep, once again, op decal option specific on which exhaust you use. So, and also marking specific on which propeller you use. And call out just to make sure you use minimal glue putting the prop on. Pedo tube and oh, very late call out for Johnny Pilot here. I woo. If you're gonna put the pilot in, I would be tempted to stuff him in somewhere back here, cause I can foresee having to do some very drastic surgery to get this guy to fit into the cockpit at this late stage so if you want the pilot in your plane I suggest somewhere before step 10 you actually put him in closed canopy or open canopy with the radio antenna and your Spitfire is done so First marking scheme, 307th Fighter Squadron, U.S. Army Air Force in Algeria, late 1942. The yellow surround would indicate uh, Operation Torch or sometime after. Some would call it uh, heresy to put American markings on a Spitfire, but... Uh, makes for something different and you can actually see where they would have painted out the uh, extraneous British roundels the slightly darker shade of your camo color very striking with the big shark mouth on there 
that's in your typical tropical scheme dark dark earth midstone and azure blue or two squadrons south african air force in italy in late 1943 same paint scheme dark earth midstone azure blue nice big red spinner and of course got the four cannon armament very very distinctive looking and i don't no, I have to consult the research, but uh, I'm not sure if with the four cannons, if they still kept the four 303s, or for weight savings, they kept the machine guns out. Um, so that would dictate your weathering. If they didn't have the machine guns, you wouldn't have any soot staining. It would just be on the cannons. So consult your references. Uh, what do I get here? Photos of JL-115 appear to show that no Springbok marking was carried to port, but may have been worn to starboard, so this is included as an optional decal, number 45, so that's this one here. It was kind of the uh, national symbol for South Africa was the, uh, the Springbok. The uh, later style, immediate post-war roundel had the, uh, the Springbok in the middle of the roundel. Much like Australia had, or Australia had the kangaroo, New Zealand had the kiwi, and Canada had the maple leaf. Uh, photos of other Spitfire Cs of the same period show tailplane tips trimmed in red. Some aircraft have a paler color extending over the leading edge, but this is unclear if it is underside blue or yellow. Other aircraft show blister gun blisters in darker color, nature unknown. JL-115 appears not to feature either the pale leading edge or darker gun blisters, but research is ongoing. So, some cons consultation of the historical record here. Um, other aircraft in this squadron had some of these attributes. They can't say with certainty if this one has it, so you've got a little bit of artistic license to play with there. And of course, if you don't like either of these schemes, there's a million and one different decal sheets for the Spitfire. And with the 5C having seen service pretty much everywhere during the Second World War, you've got no shortage of colorful markings. Um, Mediterranean, North Africa, Southeast Asia, Burma, Australia, Russia, pretty much any part of the world to suit your taste if you want to do the Spitfire up differently. So, the new 172nd Mark 5C Spitfire from Airfix. A clean, crisp, nice looking new kit. Um, no flash, no mismolded parts. Panel lines look in scale. Parts look reasonably well defined. Can't seem to find much fault with this one as of yet. And nice to see somebody kitting the 5C version of the Spitfire used everywhere during the war and most mainstream manufacturers seem to forget about this variant um, so up till now the only good option was the kp az kit which although nicely detailed is a little bit of a challenge to get together but we will be doing a build review of this kit and quite possibly a side-by-side -side comparison with the kp kit just to see how the two stack up and which one is going to be the easier build versus which one's going to be more detailed. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so so you don't miss out. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next time.